Okay, what we're going to look at here is basically adding some jump controls to uh, characters. So we've already got our forward and back, left and right. And we've got a space for a jump. One thing to note is that if the character is moving in a direction, when you press jump, we can't. Once we're in the air, we can't change our traje trajectory. So let's look at that. Sort of like how things would work in the real world. Obviously, we could modify that, but when, that's beyond what's looking at here. So let's get started. So now, what we need to do is go and set up our custom input actions to handle the jump, and then also write the script. So the first thing we're going to do is. Set up our input actions. Maybe we may have our default pre made ones. So we've got move, look, and fire. But we don't have a jump. So if you want to add one on, we're going to click on the plus and we're going to call this jump. So now we can write a function in a script called on jump. At the moment, there's no bindings. So we want to add some bindings to control what's going to happen. So the first thing we're going to do, okay, so we're just going to bind the space key. So we're going to press keyboard we can also just press listen and then it'll wait for us to press a key there we go press the space key and I want to assign that to keyboard and mouse now I want another binding and this time it's going to be for the gamepad and I'm just going to drop through here and I'm going to use button south if you have a gamepad attached you should be able to use listen no, it doesn't work. I think it's not running properly at this point. So it only works for keyboards. So button south is like on Xbox, AXYB, and on PlayStation, circle, triangle, cross, and square. So we've now got those jump keys assigned. Obviously, we can add some other ones if we wanted to. But I'm just going to save that asset so it's updated it. And then close out of that. And we're going to go back into our scripts folder and make a new script called player jump. We could include all of this into our player movement, but it just ends up that file just gets becomes absolutely huge. And I'm going to just open up my player prefab, back to that script, and drag my script onto it. So I can now see I've got my player movement script as well as my player jump script reason why I might want to keep these as two separate scripts is it means if I just want to add my jump function to another object that doesn't have this sort of movement I can just go and plug this in so it means my code becomes a bit more reusable so I'm now just going to open up my player jump script okay first thing we need to do is use the unity engine input system okay I also need like before the character controller so I'm just going to make a private variable character controller nicely using the same variables as I used in my player script. So I'm actually going to just copy this line of code here for my start menu so I can get that component and I'm also going to require that component as well. Okay, now what I need to do is handle this jump. So I'm just going to put in a void on jump. Now, because this one is just a single button press, we don't need to give any arguments or parameters like we did with the on move because hey, it just knows if we press this button or not. Okay, so when we jump, let's just test it actually works. So just hold it to print out the message jump pressed. So in our little console down the bottom, when I hit the space bar, I should get jump pressed. And that's worked. And I'm going to just press the A button on my Xbox controller because that's turned on. And we see it's also registered that one as well. So that is absolutely awesome. We'll stop that, we'll clear out the console and switch back. 
So we know our jump button is being detected at this point. Now we actually need to go and handle the jump. But we're going to need a few different variables to deal with this. So let's make a section called jump variables. Now there's quite a few things here. So we need the player velocity. So basically the speed that the player is currently moving at. A boolean to see if the player is on the ground. And we also need a jump height. So how high the character should be able to jump. And we'll set that to 5f, but I'm going to make that a serialized field so that I can go now and back in Unity. If I'm on the player, I can now go and customize that jumping height if I need to. I also need to be able to detect if I've actually pressed the jump button. And we're going to assume when the game the player is created, we haven't pressed the jump button. And finally, I'm going to make a gravity. I could probably actually have this in a different class. Minus 9.81F. So that's going to help be a static value that we're going to be bringing it down. This I probably could actually have in a separate class so that I can just have one gravity value that is shared across the entire game and then just be able to modify this because by having it in here if I change want to change the gravity I'm going to have to change it in a lot of different places but at the moment it's just in this player jump so this is okay now let's deal with that on jump and so we're just going to basically set this up so that the character can flip back and forward between hey jump's been pressed we should be allowed to jump and not so we're just going to add a little message that appears up and test that before we get the character to actually move up and down on the screen okay so now we're going to go and add a little check check if you know no vertical movement so we're going to basically go if the character controller has a velocity on the y-axis that is equal to zero we're going to print out a message so if they're not moving vertically on the y-axis hey they can jump Otherwise, they can't. Oh, we've got a closing bracket there. So we're going to say can't jump. We're going to say that in the air. So let's go back and test this. So if we hit play. say we can jump and we're gonna to have to do a little bit of work here getting our character up on the stairs and when we fall off you see it says you can't jump in the air and now we're on the ground we can jump again cool so we know that is all working so it's handling though that information correctly now if we can jump we want to set the jump pressed flag to be true and now we need to go and end it, run in basically another function for handling the jump movement and we're going to make sure we call that from the update function it's very common you might write this function here but never actually call it in the update so it never actually runs this code might be perfect 
but your character's not jumping and it's because you haven't told it to go and run this movement check. So we're going to get a grounded player. Character controller dot is grounded, so if they're on the ground or not. If they're a grounded player, we want to set their velocity on the y-axis to be zero. So if on the ground, hey, we don't want them to move. So let's put a little comment for that. So if they're on the ground, stop the vertical movement, but we leave the other velocities the same. Now, if jump press, so if they've pressed the jump button, so if this flag in this on jump has been switched, turned to true, and they're on the ground, we want to let them jump. So if jump pressed and on jump a player. Okay, so the next step what we need to do is get our player velocity on the y-axis and we're going to increase that and don't worry too much about this. So math f dot square root get our jump height value times our gravity value okay okay oh and I forgot we've stored this gravity value as a negative number up here probably should have put that as a positive but we're just going to times this by negative one so basically negative times a negative is a positive times jump height so that's how high our player character is going to move now as we've done this we now that we've handled that jump press button we're going to just switch it to be false so hey we haven't actually pressed the button at the moment but we'll never be able to run this until the player hits the ground again but it just lets us actually press the button Okay, but no, we can't actually turn it to true until we've hit the ground again. So we're never going to run into that section. Now we need to basically handle our player velocity. Take our gravity and we're going to modify it by time dot delta time so that's the amount of time that's expired since the last frame was run and so this is going to help us basically update the character in a nice parabola and we're doing character controller dot move and we take that player velocity and we're just going to times it by time dot Delta time again. So let's go and have a little look at this and see how it looks in Unity. So hopefully, this has gone and compiled. Looks like it has. So I've got my jump height. My character's moving around quite nicely. Let's go and change that jump height to 10. And our character is really nicely moving. Okay, so we've got some nice little movement there for our character. Sometimes this might not always end up as nice, but what we can actually do, if you want to combine it all into one script, we can just take these bits here, the variables, paste them into a player movement script, 
and then also just put that movement jump in this one script and it will all run at the same point so i hope you've enjoyed this i know it's been a lot to take in uh remember you will make mistakes things will break things will not compile but fail upwards